Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Rafia and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make your own set of cyberlocks. And before we get started, I want to thank once again cyberlockshop.co.uk for helping me out on these videos. They were kind enough to send me all of the tubular crin that I'm using in this video, as well as the cyberlock set from my previous video, which is actually called the Arfia set. And you can get that set on their website, which I will be linking down below. Cyberlock Shop also sent me a headband, these gorgeous cyber goggles and a mask that you will see me wearing in one of my future dancing videos, which will of course be with a cyber goggle look. And they were kind enough to give me a coupon code for you guys to use on your orders. It is Orphea15 and it will give you a 15% discount on all cyber falls and cyber wigs they sell and they have a huge variety. Now, I personally love working with Cyberlock Shop because I already knew their products, I knew they would be a great fit, and it's actually me who contacted them and not the other way around. Cyberlock Shop ships worldwide and they have really good customer service, so if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact them. And now, without further ado, let's show you how I made these falls out of tubular crin. And the first thing you will need when starting to make Cyberlocks is tubular crin. This is the crin that I got from Cyberlock Shop. They were kind enough to send me some to make my own falls as well. And the bags that they were kind enough to send me are two bags of black tubular crin in the regular size, two bags of black and red crin also in the regular size, and finally one red metallic bag in the small size. So I'm gonna be making these today into a set of falls, or actually two sets of falls that I will be showing you that you already saw at the beginning of this video and that you will also see at the end of it. And except for the tubular crin, you will only be needing two other things. The first one is a pair of scissors to cut your tubular crin to your desired length. And the other thing is what I use is elastic. I am using a sturdy stretchy elastic that is rather thick you can use thinner one you can use ribbon you can use whatever you like and this is what the falls will be made onto so that you can afterwards tie them to your hair and wear them and since i want you guys to be able to see what i'm doing i'm gonna be using the black and red crin first to demonstrate how you should cut and measure tubular crin so let's open this bag and take it all out whoops there we go so as you guys can hopefully see, tubular crimp comes into one really big piece. And hold on, let me just gently pull it all together. Whoops. <laughs> just keeps on coming. Um, so tubular crimp has two ends when you buy it. And these ends come unfinished. So what you want to do when you want to make a fall is measure out how much you want. And the way I personally do this is actually by just holding it on my head and seeing where I want the falls to fall. So what I like to do is just take the center of my head, which is kind of my guiding point, and then push it down on my head so that it kind of stretches out a little bit already and then see how far it goes. What I will then do is just take this bit take my pair of scissors and look where the other bit ends and this doesn't have to be accurate i actually prefer it if my falls are kind of a bunch of different sizes but not too far off each other um, than just one big lump of cyber locks so what i will do now is just snip them off and you see that i kind of did a boo-boo already i stretched mine out too much when i was holding them but that's okay we can fix this the next thing you have to do is actually very simple. You take the end of your cyber locks and you just fold it inside. So you kind of just push it inside to make them end like this. So they don't ravel anymore, that this is rounded and that you have a bit inside the cyber locks. And I will try and give you a close up of what this looks like. So you take the piece, you squeeze it kind of and then you push it inwards so you kind of create a finger trap so this is now folded inside and you have this nice edge finish that i personally really like so this is how you finish off the cyber locks and then you have a finished piece of cyber lock that we will afterwards put on a fall 
So right now I know that with this length of cyber locks that I am cutting off because I don't want them to be overly long. I have one, two, three, four, five pieces out of one bag. So this is what all of these look like cut and just quickly pulled together. I'm now gonna make them into two piles, so one pile for each locks and I like to alternate my colors. So I will do black and red together and then at the top I will put a bunch of these, so three on each side of these and they will actually create a nice and full look. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is separate these into two piles so I know I have two piles with an equal amount of locks on each side. And I actually got five to six pieces out of each bag. I have six of these tiny ones I have 12, 10 to 12 of these black ones and 10 to 12 of these red ones, depending on the length I cut them. So you can see that this is about what you get off of five bags, four bags of thicker tubular crimp and one bag of skinny tubular crimp. But now let's split them up into two falls and show you how to attach them to your elastic. Now what I personally do to measure this, because I don't really measure it, is just to see how can I tie a knot easily and still have it be around my head. So this is kind of the length I'm going for. I'm not sure what this compares to. It is kind of like my forearm length, I think, more or less. It doesn't really matter. And if you're using an elastic, you might have to take a little bit less than if you're using ribbon. Elastic stretches out, ribbon doesn't. Um, but on the other hand, I sometimes find it easier to tie ribbon around my head because elastic obviously stretches out and can move a little bit, whereas ribbon doesn't. So you want to cut two pieces if you're making two separate falls and one piece if you're just making one. So now you want to take your elastic and you want to take your first pieces of tubular crimp that you want to put on the elastic. So I actually have five longer ones, three red ones and two black ones. So what I personally am going to do is I'm going to alternate them. So what you will do is you will kind of take more or less the center of the tubular crimp and you will press it so that you can actually take it. And then you are going to loop that through the elastic, like so. And then actually you have two choices. Most people tie a knot, and that's what I'm gonna show you today as well, but you can also loop them around. Now the difference between tying a knot and looping them around, when you loop them around, you can very easily take them off again afterwards. When you tie a knot, you will have to undo the knots. So you just tie a knot with the cyber logs around whatever you're using to make your false and generally one knot will do to keep it in place. And you will see afterwards that we're gonna put more and more on these. Um, if you wanna be 100% sure that these don't move, just put a second knot on them. I prefer doing this for the first layer especially, or if it is the very first time that you're making falls, just to have it be more secure. And this is what the very first locks look like on the falls. Now I do want to show you my other method as well, but this is not as permanent, as in you can easily slide your locks off um, and reuse them with this method. What I also like to do is kind of take the locks, again, push through the middle, and then what you will do, I can create a loop, but instead of going with that loop over the false, you will just hold it against it and then just thread the other side through so that you kind of create a loop system so that you can still move them around, etc. So when you tighten it, oops, let me just quickly pull it this, it looks a little more like this. So the look that I prefer is a more springy look, so the look when you actually tie knots. But if you want a more muted down look, you can also do this other method. So this is what the first five look like together. I alternate black and red, and now on top of these I will continue to put the others. And I will be back with you once I've finished this side, so I can start on the other one. This is what it looks like after putting all the bigger pieces on. So now I have the smaller ones left and then we're done with one side. So this is what this looks like after putting in the smaller tubular crin as well, so the mini crin, and this will actually be one false. So let's see how that could look. I think that's not too bad. It's not as full as I generally like my false to be, 
but I think to show you guys how this looks and how much you should get etc it can give a good representation so I would have personally if I would have purchased these bought a bag extra of just plain black ones to fill these up even more so these are a bit shorter than I thought they would be but I actually really love the look of them I think they are super cute and super cool as well I do have a lot of long fall sets so this will be a nice change for me um, so this is what you get out of five bags of tubular print four bags of bigger one and one bag of smaller one so I would definitely recommend if you want longer falls to get at least one bag extra of big one and two bags of smaller one depending how full you want them to look and I think they will look cute as is so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put them up and I will not be showing you on camera how I put them up that's a video that's gonna be up on my channel next time so next week on Wednesday so this is what these falls look like as is with five bags of tubular crin as you can see the red pops really well the black is a little less noticeable um, that's because the red is super vibrant and I love it but this is what five bags of tubular crin gives you volume wise I think it's not bad but I do prefer when there is more volume in my falls but I'm also gonna show you what these look like in a one bun look and I think that will make them seem a lot more fuller and a lot more complete so I will try and fix it as soon as possible and I will be right back with you guys so this is five bags of tubular crin used to create two sets of cyber falls you can create one big look with them this is what i did right now so i just created a one bun in the middle of my head and then put these cyber falls on and completed the look with a black headband to kind of give a base for my goggles to sit on and of course these really amazing goggles and I personally really enjoy cyber falls that are not super long. I know I have a lot longer sets, but I also like my shorter ones, especially for dancing. These are a lot more easier to wear. Now, if you want, you can also create an extra set. And this is what a lot of friends of mine do. They have color sets and then they have a black set that they will match up with those color sets. So if you want, you could even put an extra plain black set of cyber locks underneath this layer just to create more volume and more length and I think that works pretty well with basically any cyber locks look so I hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up if you did don't forget to subscribe to my channel for all of my other videos I will be doing a how to wear cyber locks video next week on Wednesday with a two bun and a one bun method so that you know both ways on how to wear cyber locks so thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!